tease or bust. We took the leap and untied the lines. Our destination is the Florida Keys and we have 12 days to get there. We'll be traveling over 250 miles through the Okeechobee Waterway and down the Florida ICW from Pahokee into the Keys. Our first day, we got a late start, but still managed to travel for over 12 hours from Pahokee through the Port Mayaka Lock and anchoring before the St. Lucie Lock for the night. We had no idea how lucky our first day of travel was. The wind and waters were calm, and we didn't see another boat on the waterway with us the whole route, making it a nice, relaxing trip. After exiting the St. Lucie Lock on the second day and heading towards the ICW, our luck changed. Our goal was to traverse the St. Lucie River into the ICW and head south until we found a suitable anchorage to pull off in for the night. As the favorable conditions we experienced the first day disappeared, we found ourselves fighting both the wind and current. So we attached Putt-Putt to Gwen's hip, gaining the momentum we needed to maneuver through the waterways of Stewart without draining our batteries. This situation worked fine until the last variable came into play. We've mentioned it before and we'll mention it again, but the worst part of being on the waterways for us were some of the other power boaters. I'm not talking about your average friendly boater. I'm talking about the one who flipped us off and opened throttle next to us while Sean is wearing a bright orange life vest and sitting in the dinghy. Or the teenager who was too busy texting at the helm to even look up and acknowledge our presence. Or the ones flying past, nearly missing fallen water skiers and swimmers. I really do wish the camera had been set up to catch the general lack of safety exhibited by the numerous power boats flying past everyone in these narrow channels. We pretty much felt like a bicycle traveling down the highway, and the cars were flying by, mad that they had to share the road with us. After our second day fighting the many boaters out on the water, we decided to adopt a new strategy. We would wake up before dawn and get moving at first light stopping somewhere to anchor before lunch and waiting until early evening to continue our path down the ICW. We hope this strategy would help us avoid the majority of traffic on the waterway. It's 4th of July, we're in West Palm Beach. It's getting kind of hot and we're getting rocked around a lot by all the boats having fun. So we're gonna put the dogs in the dinghy and we're going to land. See what kind of mischief we can get in for a little while during this heat wave. Hmm. talking to me okay you're in fun torturing my voodoo right there oh he's so intent oh you were just sitting there eating it in front of him on purpose huh yeah mean old little squirrel you're not too mean because i'm the one that fed you <laughs> oh. he doesn't even want to we stayed anchored in west palm beach for the fourth of july we had the perfect view as we watched a fireworks show in the rain from our enclosed cockpit. The fourth day we left West Palm Beach early and anchored for the night on Lake Boca Raton. Although our three foot draft allows us to squeeze into anchorages many other sailboats couldn't, we still had to be careful in selecting anchorages because the tides could vary by up to two feet. We were headed into the area where the luxury yachts began to appear. It's also the part of the ICW that contains seven drawbridges in less than 30 miles. As if it wasn't stressful enough, now we will have drawbridges in front of us and million dollar yachts on all sides. We literally can't afford to make any mistakes. We leave Lake Boca Raton and continue south towards Fort Lauderdale. This also happens to be the area that we discover a new limitation to our electric motor. 
After battling the strong current while waiting for a drawbridge to open, our motor controller got overheated and put itself in a safety limp mode, restricting our ability to command current past 60 amps. This added a whole new level of stress as we were barely moving faster than the current and because we were already crossing through the drawbridge, we were not in a position to use putt-putt to safely gain speed. So now we'll be adding a motor controller cooling system upgrade to Gwen's to-do list. How warm is it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Not too hot. Okay, that's good. It's got a seawater taste. Our afternoon hop down the ICW took us through Fort Lauderdale. We previously received numerous warnings about the Fort Lauderdale area and the large amount of traffic it regularly receives. We felt really fortunate as we expected the worst conditions, but soon found that we couldn't have asked for much better conditions. With only a few other boaters around, the Fort Lauderdale madness we were prepared for was minimal. Everybody else packed and behind him waiting to pass us. Oh, y'all play nice now. <laughs> Why? Because they got to get in line because we're all going under the bridge together. Fort Lauderdale Madness, part 15. <laughs> yeah, Fort Lauderdale Madness, that's it's for sure. It's been crazy. <laughs> but now it's the evening, it's a little bit more mellow. Tide is going out, the current is going out or in the way we're going finally and um yeah so we're gonna attempt to go through fort lauderdale 6 45 at night so we're looking at low traffic as well hopefully and that's it we're going hopefully they don't push us out the way we're racing i think we could take them <laughs> what do you think they're getting ready to dodge for third time oh good Let me continue recording. <laughs> I was about to stop that, but um, since he's just gonna cut us off, do the damn thing, dude. You can see what speed I'm going. Yeah, that we're going slow as well. Looking at me like, dude. Like really though, baby. Back up. No. Oh my God. Okay, he's backing off. Keep going. Thank you. <laughs> well, we can go by, huh? Is it because I'm recording you we can go by? <laughs> you will definitely want to dock on this side, whatever you're doing. I'm glad everybody else left. Yay. Okay, that was nerve-wracking for just a hot second. Too bad I didn't have my camera out when them teenagers were chugging beer bongs. <laughs> Let them make it. Here we go, folks. Just the serious stuff. Yeah, see? We won! Ha ha! Just joking. Lauderdale, yachting capital of the world. Yeah, we're at 56 foot for clearance. Oh, that's good. Stupid ICW all the way down. Go out to see and see what we see. We're not going out to see right now. He's making stuff up. Look at those big monsters. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm glad they're not moving around right now. Very glad. Tugboats are just 
stressful on <laughs> us it is. That in that'll pull you out. Not if you wait for slack tide. Coming with me. Time it all perfect. It's much better than struggling and getting beat up the whole time. Slack tide, slack traffic. Yeah. It's all good. Easier current. It's not that hot out. Yeah, yeah it's not that hot right now. We've gotten kind of lucky with that big time. So we're running behind on our time. Um, and we don't want to drain the batteries against this current. Well, the tide actually is kind of starting to go out on us. Um, and it's nighttime, so we can't use solar to charge things. So we're cheating and we're using putt putt, <laughs> Sean's and putt putt. So technically, we're in tow. And so that means that all the drawbridges have to open for us on demand. And that really works out well for us. Everybody else doesn't necessarily seem to like it unless they get to cut in when we cut in. Um, but yeah, we do what we gotta do. And it's working out pretty well. A little cheat there. Don't tell. Our sixth day of travel was on a Saturday. And we quickly discovered that our late morning anchorage was a popular party spot. So when we pulled into Anchorage at like 9.30 this morning uh, to duck off for a little while like we've been doing, there was this boat, that boat, and then a couple other ones behind it back there. That's it. Now, <laughs> at like 1 o'clock or 1.30, we now have everybody in Miami that has a boat out here, I'm pretty sure. That is not the horizon or a bridge or a building. Those are boats that make that white mark, that white line totally in front of us. That completely covers from here. All that are boats lined up in the Bisking Bay at the sandbar and they're all partying their butts off. Not us. Oh, yes. Woo! oh and they're watching the World Cup too because they got like two 80 foot screens out there. That's pretty pimp. So our plans might change. I don't know if we're going to be able to leave this anchorage uh, when I was planning at like 4 o'clock. Because um, if most of these people aren't gone, then we're not even going to attempt to kind of maneuver through this with them all being power boats and us being a sailboat. So we might have to wait a little bit. Uh, it's a nice anchorage and everything, but I might have messed up our plans by picking this one. I didn't realize it was going to be this active. Uh, learn as you go. Hey. Okay. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Oh, it's okay. Stay right by me. It's definitely salt water. We stayed the night and left our party anchorage very early the next morning. Our goal was to make it past Miami and hopefully all the way across the Biscayne Bay before stopping for the night again. It was going to be another long day of traveling slowly. So we have definitely figured out that earlier is better because it's about 8 a.m. on Saturday and absolutely no other boats out on the waterway besides us so far anyways. So hopefully it stays like this. We're only going about another hour before we're going to stop for midday and then come back out in the afternoon when hopefully if there won't be enough, a lot of boats again. We were fortunate once again as we made it through Miami with minimal boat traffic. We used putt-putt to gain speed and allow our solar to charge our battery banks since it was supposed to be a cloudy afternoon.
Just as we neared the end of the towers that create the Miami skyline, tragedy struck and our dinghy motor died. Sean was unable to get it running again, so we turned on our electric motor, Babe the Blue Ox, and continued into the Biscayne Bay. For the very first time our entire trip, the wind was finally not a direct headwind. As a matter of fact, it was a perfect beam reach. So for our first time, Sean hoisted the head sail and we began motor sailing. Trying to make some time, some speed. It's definitely giving us at least a mile, if not a mile and a half faster in the speed department. Pretty cool. As our battery life began to drop, the winds began to pick up. Without any other option, it was time to hoist the main and see if Gone with the Wind was true to her namesake. Sailing at about four miles per hour. Um, just lost our way. Plus, we saw a dolphin too. And I saw my first dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. That's all you got? We <laughs> ain't got nothing out here. I don't see worse. Huh. Don't scare me anymore. <laughs> How fast are we going? We're doing 2.6 right now. In, so don't make fun of us folks. So you can see behind me that front there. We've been fortunate enough to ride the front of it. Apparently it's doing the same speed as us, so that's working out pretty well. It's been giving us the wind we need in order to sail down the Biscayne Bay and head down into the Keys. So we're really happy that we caught this. It was kind of perfect timing for us once again. So really grateful that worked out because we finally get to sail gone with the wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the seventh day was definitely our most impressive day of travel. We motored 22 miles even though our dinghy motor died. Then we sailed Gwen for the first time for 27 more miles across the Biscayne Bay. Sailing our Gulf Star took me from the edge of quitting our new life to renewing my faith in our future living on a sailboat. Thanks for watching Big Easy Sailing. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment below. A special thanks goes to all of our crew members on Patreon for all of your support. If you'd like to join our crew, click the Patreon link to find out how. You can keep current with our adventures by following us on Facebook and Instagram. We hope y'all enjoyed this video and look forward to the next as we officially sail into the Florida Keys. Thanks, y'all.